entertainment. And specifically, you know, what we choose to put in front of our eyeballs, like movies, TV, or what we decide to put in our ears with our music. The attitude that we ought to have is one that says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Now, if you know something is wicked, how in the world are you going to set that before your eyes? I understand the draw because there is a reason to do it in the flesh. It may make you laugh. It may make you cry. It may make you, you know, evoke some emotions and be gratifying in some way to your flesh to sit down and watch some wicked thing because you are getting entertained by that. It is something that's enjoyable for you to sit down and listen to but, or watch. But that is not the attitude that we need to have. That's, after this sermon, if you go back and, and decide to just set wicked things before your eyes, that's going to be willful saying, maybe you've been doing it ignorantly to this point. But after today, you're not going to have that same excuse of not knowing what the Bible says and not knowing that Scripture teaches us right here. We're not going to put anything that's wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. This is the attitude that we need to have. If we're going to try to keep ourselves pure and try to keep ourselves right in the eyes of the Lord with our works, we need to hate the work of them that turn aside. Not be buddy-buddy with it, not enjoy it, not actually feast our eyes on the work of all the wicked people and then say, hey, I just want to look at what all these wicked people have to do. On the contrary, what he says, he says, Mine eyes, in verse number 6, shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He's saying, these are going to be my role models. This is what I'm going to spend my time putting in front of my eyes, putting in front of my face. It's going to be the good people. It's going to be the righteous people. It's not going to be the, the wicked reprobates and the wicked people of this world that are just, just full of iniquity. Why are we going to choose to put that in front of us? Now, I stopped watching the television. I don't even know how long ago. It's, it's hard to remember at this point. It's probably been, it's definitely been at least a decade. I know the progression and the way things have been going with the TV shows. I'm 41 years old. So up until the point I was probably 29, I've been watching TV regularly, I've been watching movies, everything that came out, everything that Hollywood would put out, everything that's on the TV show, whatever is popular, watching all of that garbage and filth and wickedness. And I know it was wicked back then, and I can't imagine it's gotten any, has it gotten any better? Does anyone know? Is it, is, oh, wait, now everything's pure now. Are, are, are there, is it still being promoted you know, people committing adultery and getting divorces and fornicating and drinking and doing drugs and, and all of this stuff that the Bible teaches against as being wicked. Is this just being brought up as being normal, normal part of life and kind of giving you the adulteress's side of, of, oh, this is why you should have sympathy for the adulteress that cheats on her husband because she has all these problems. And they do their character development on these programs to show, and you know, it's called programs for a reason. Because they're programming you to think a certain way. Media is powerful. The, the TV, music, this is really powerful. The messages that get conveyed into your mind has a lasting impact. Even if you're aware of it, it still is going to impact you. It still desensitizes you. I remember the progression. I remember back when, when it was just unheard of. I mean, at first, they would have you know, the, the, the sodomites, the homosexuals on the, on the television screen just as, as this, this humor, right? They'd have this real flamboyant, faggy character that everyone could just laugh at. That's the way it was in like the 70s and the 80s. And you have like your threes company and whatever, like all these other shows where you just have your, your, your token sodomite. And they were just there to get it, to get a laugh out of it. Oh, cause it was kind of funny. And then I remember when the first movies or shows started coming out where they actually showed like a kiss or some type of affection and it's revolting. 
It is revolting, and it was revolting, and people were outraged by it. But then what happened? People started getting desensitized the next time it happened. And the next time it happened, people stopped being coming so outraged by it and started accepting, well, this is just the way things are going now. After you've also been crammed by the news, crammed with, the, with the, every other form of media saying, you need to tolerate this, you need to accept this, we're here to stay, we're out and proud, and, we're, you know, and just cramming this message down your throat ad nauseum. And they, they, they work at it and work at it, work at it, work at it, to the point today where we have people that are supposedly, that are, not just supposedly, they are believers in Jesus Christ. They believe the Bible, they believe God's word, and they're going to criticize and condemn the Christian that's going to speak out against the sodomites and say, they're not welcome here, we have standards, we're not going to put any wickedness before our eyes, and yet we're going to be the ones now that are going to be condemned as, as being wicked. When people are, are calling the wicked righteous and the righteous wicked. These are the days that we're headed to. But you know what? There are going to be some of us that are going to make a stand and say, we're not going to do this. This is nuts. This is crazy what's going on. And we're going to maintain our faithfulness to the Lord. We're actually going to read his word. We're actually not just going to read it. We're going to apply it because we love it and care about it. And we're not just going to say and give lip service to God and say, oh, yeah, oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, I believe Jesus. No, we're going we're to read and study for ourselves and not just put on a show in front of people, oh yeah, I went to church today, post on Facebook, oh, I had a great time at church, and then live the rest of our life like hell. That's not why we're here. If that's why you're here, you know what, there's a lot of other churches that you could go to, and you'd fit in just fine. 